Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. In this day and age, people seem to forget that the most basic human right of all is the right to believe. No prayers, no moments of silence, nothing. Think of the other children out there who are subjected to their repressive belief system. If we sit by and do nothing, the pressure that we're feeling today will mean persecution tomorrow. We're at war. What makes nonviolence so radical is its unwavering commitment to a nonviolent approach. Isn't that sort of like what Jesus meant when he said that we should love our enemies? Yes. You have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. One of your students sent a text to their parents. Did this happen? If you're asking whether I responded to a student's question, yes. And your answer incorporated the words of Jesus. What were you thinking, Grace? The Thollies are asking that you be fired, plus revocation of your teaching certificate. How do we make this go away and not get blood on our hands? We let the ACLU do it. We're going to prove once and for all that God is dead. I'm no order in the matter of Thawley versus Wesley. Mr. Kane will insist faith isn't on trial here, but that is exactly what is on trial. You're looking to prove that Jesus Christ existed? Oh, that's ridiculous. I hate what people like your clients stand for and what they're doing to our society. You're under arrest. These people, they're looking to destroy you. Everyone's telling me to stay out of it. What is your heart telling you to do? I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. I am not going to be afraid to say the name Jesus. If we're going to insist that a Christian's right to believe is subordinate to all other rights, then it's not a right. Mr. Inland, you are out of order. I charge you with contempt. I accept the charge because I have nothing but contempt for these proceedings. Now you're about to meet the original American Idol, <laughs> Tad Boone. Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you. You well, know, that is true. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Henny Bunch. Hi. Yeah, uh, American Idol is really patterned after the old Ted Mack Amateur Hour, which yes. before that was Major Bose. Yes. Frank Sinatra and his group won that years before on radio. And then Ted Mack owned Saturday Night TV with a talent show, and the, and the winners each week were chosen by the viewers cards, letters, and uh, if you won, you were brought back the next week, and if you won three weeks in a row, which I did, you come back whenever there would be a three-time, a bunch of three-time winners, we would compete with each other. And I came back for that about a year and a half after I won the three times. But then, while I was waiting to hear who won, and they tell me I was winning amateur show, I went on a professional show, Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scout show. Oh, yes on Monday night. See, that's all in my time schedule. You yeah. know, yes. you, and I won that. Well, you can't win a professional show Monday and be declared an amateur winner the following Saturday. So you disqualified I yourself? I was disqualified from winning the final big scholarship prize, which I could have used, and oh I thought, my goodness. I blew the whole thing. Now, now you you graduated from? Columbia. Columbia? From University. Did you Magna get a PhD? No, not PhD, uh, but magna cum laude, honors. I missed my Phi Beta Kappa key by a technicality. I should have been told by a uh, faculty advisor or student advisor that, that I need to take one more content course instead of an elective. And I, I thought I was home free. I'd made straight A's. I thought I'm going to get a Phi Beta Kappa key to wear, but I missed it on a technicality. But I made the grades, and magna cum laude is not bad. Did Daniel Boone ever think that he was going to have a relative that smart? He couldn't spell bear. <laughs> he spelled D. Boone killed a bar. He even, I think he left E off the end of his name. But he was a brilliant man, but not schooled. Yeah. He wasn't schooled in, in Now learning, your mom and dad learning. must have had some smart genes. Yes, sure. Mom and dad, dad a building contractor, mom a registered nurse. Yeah. Very practical professions. Yeah. 
So when my brother and two sisters and I were growing up in Nashville, the fact that these two... And that's where we are right now. Yeah, practical, uh, professional people considered our Bible study and home devotionals and church services a practical part of life really made an impression on us. Is that God speaking? Yeah, yeah. Just, the, just, you just have to talk a little louder. Over the intercom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. We're right in the midst of a lot of noise. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Say again. Whatever the, whatever you're yeah. saying, yeah. We, we agree. Yeah. We, we agree right now. Yes. Now, what, what songs are you talking about when you won? Do you remember what song you were singing? I think I do. The first was, I believe. I believe for every drop of rain that falls. A pop song, big hit by Frankie Lane. Yes. But it was a song of faith. And I won the Ted Mack show singing that. I won the Arthur Godfrey show singing, I believe. After that, on the Now, Ted were you Mack, a believer at the time? Oh, yeah. Okay. Strong Christian. In fact, when I went on Godfrey's show, there were two other performers. It was only a half hour show each three people would vie for uh, four, four mornings on his uh, morning show on radio and TV. And I was praying for a three-way tie. I didn't expect to win, but I had a New Testament in my pocket right over my heart. Really? And I was just praying for a three-way tie. Maybe I would get on the morning wow. show. Instead, I won. But then that disqualified me from Ted Mack. I thought, no, I lost. Uh, but what happened was the result of both those things attracted the attention of Randy Wood, the head of Dot Records, based outside of Nashville, not far from here. Very aggressive, independent label. And he, I stopped off at home to see my folks on the way back to North Texas State, where I was with my wife, expecting our first baby. And uh, where, where did you meet? Surely here in school, at Christian High School at David Lipscomb, okay, yeah. here in Nashville. And we were sweethearts from almost the day we met 16, at 16, married at 19, and then at 20... You've almost, been married 62 years. 62 years, yeah. Wow. And uh, that tells you she is a wonderful woman. Yes. And I've been a very obedient husband. <laughs> what was your first... Not really. Yeah. What was your first hit, Pat? First hit was Two Hearts, Two Kisses, Make one love, a rock and roll song. One heart's not enough, baby. Two hearts will make you feel crazy. One kiss will make you feel so nice. Two kisses take you to paradise. Two hearts, two kisses make one love. Hear that, Brooke? <laughs> and next was Ain't That a Shame. Yeah, oh, we came right after it. Yeah. So the one kind of repudiated the other, I guess. I hadn't thought about that. Where did April Love come in? It was about... I don't know, number 10 or 12 down the line. You won't believe this. I didn't believe it myself because it happened so fast, I didn't know it. And it doesn't sound possible. But from March of 55, when I made Two Hearts, to February of 56, when Elvis Presley released Heartbreak Hotel, yes. I had six million selling singles, two of them number ones, in that 11 month period. The two, what were the two number ones? The two number ones were I'll Be Home and Ain't That a Shame. Okay, those I'll are the I'll Be two Home ones. was um, I'll Be Home, My Darling. Yes, and, I remember. And, and it, with a recitation in the yeah. middle, it became the number one most requested song on Armed Forces Radio. This was in the late 50s. Isn't that we amazing? We had military stations all over the world, and uh, this was their song, both theirs and their sweethearts or wives hoping they would be united again, that he would be coming home. For four years, it was the most requested song. So in 11 months, that's how I was able to survive the Presley onslaught. Now, were you going school, to school at the same time? Yeah, I was at North Texas State then, and then I transferred to Columbia as the record started happening so fast that same year of 55. How did you study? Quickly. <laughs> So, so, you, I, so you really are a good student. I, yeah. I am a good student, and I have a, a, like a flypaper yeah. mind, or at least it, was, it, was, it caught more flies then than it does <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I could study very quickly and scan material and, and, and in a hurry and retain a lot of it, which often happened just before tests yes. that I didn't know were going to happen. And uh, even back in high school, Shirley was so mad about it. I'd come to, to school happy-go-lucky, 
You ready for the test? I said, test? What test? We're having a test right now. I remember those days. No. <laughs> and I would, I would just brum, 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 leaf through wow. and make an A on so the you test. Had, so you had a photographic memory. Not photographic, but retentive. Wow. I don't say photographic. Now, how did you retentive. move? How did you move into movies? We're being, we're being TV bombed. We're being TV bombed. <laughs> It's no telling what happened. Yeah, this is live. Yeah. This is live TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Got to go with it. Go yeah, with the flow. You just go with the flow. Yeah. Who was that? That chubby man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll find out later. You know. Yeah. It, it yeah. could be the head of this voice that we just heard. I thought maybe somebody here knew him. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Well, as long as he's not serving subpoenas. Yeah, that's okay. right. He knew us. He, he put a time. Yeah. When he when he saw Pat Boone, he went nuts. Okay. First it's God, and now yeah. yeah. First it's God, now it's. <laughs> Now it's a stranger walking up yeah, and hugging us. Yeah, yeah. But night, it's nice to be night, light. Yes. And it's, anyway, it's, whatever the question was. Yeah. It, the movies. How did that? How did you morph into movies? Well, the records. You know, the records. Just hit after hit after hit. And I matched Elvis hit for hit during the fifties. Really? Only recently did I find I had one more top forty hit than Elvis. And the first time we met, he was my opening act. In, uh, I told you about Are that. You, so so Elvis opened for your show? In the 11 months, not for my show, it was a sock hop, a big yeah. dance okay. function. It was in October of that first year when the records were happening. And Elvis was not known anywhere except in the southeast. Yeah. He was appearing on the uh, Shreveport, Louisiana Hayride. Yes. And he was thought of as a rockabilly. Yes. A country singer with... Yeah, yeah. Singers Nashville with didn't accept it. Rock beats, yeah. you know. And rock and roll was just happening. I mean, it was just coming into existence, really. And I happened to hit just at the right time, a few months before him. So I went in to do this sock hop in Cleveland for the big DJ, top DJ in the country. And I would lip sync three, my three hits. And he brought Elvis up from Shreveport, where he was appearing on the Louisiana A Ride, to lip sync his one record on Sun Records. And he introduced him to a crowd of teenagers, didn't know who he was. Wow. And he came out and lip-synced that uh, Blue Moon of Kentucky, yeah. keep on shining. Yeah. Well, they, they liked him, but they didn't care for that country-sounding, uh, really a bluegrass song. Yeah, that was bluegrass, and that was they, that offended them. Well, they did. They just didn't move yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. But then he says, thank you very much. I, like, I hope you like it. I like doing the other side of that record for you. And he sang, that's all right, mama. Yeah. That's all right. And that was rhythm and blues. They liked that and wanted more, but that's all he had. So he left, and I came on with my three hits. Well, you and you had more of a smooth. I got all the screen. Well, I, mine was rock and roll. You made me oh, yeah. cry yeah. when you said goodbye. Ain't that a shame? Yeah. And um, You had white bucks. He had white blue suede. White bucks, and his were scuffed up <laughs> shoes of some <laughs> nondescript. Didn't you sing Love Letters in the Sand? Love, that hadn't even happened yet, but yes. Love That's, Letters in the Sand, April Love, and, uh, Friendly Persuasion. And Since My Baby Left Me or something. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. I, those are the two I had I played over and over again. So, you know, people have, some people have asked me to sing Love Letters in the Sand at their weddings. Sure. Yes. And I said, why? It's about a love affair that didn't last. <laughs> now my broken heart cries with every wave. That's why he's walking in the sand. <laughs> you should say, write me a check for a million, I'll go ahead and do it. <laughs> you don't want me to sing... I'm, I'm writing love letters to Sam for a love that didn't last. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, that, but it sounded very romantic. How do you, do you live in the same home that you... 56 years. 56 years in Hollywood. Yeah. Has the real estate gone up? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we are living at the corner of Beverly and Sunset, right by the Beverly Hills Hotel. Oh, my. Almost an acre and a half of flat land at that corner. How many offers have you had? Many. <laughs> And, and they keep coming, and they keep going up, up. And, and we say, this is home. We're not trying to sell our house, yeah, our home. Yeah, yeah. But it's reaching the place where we're asking God, are you trying to tell us it's time for us to leave here and move to a Motel 6 or, <laughs> or <laughs> whatever, uh, or just maybe leave this very, not just prominent place, but very vulnerable place. Yes, yes. Uh, so the offers keep coming, and if we reach a certain figure and we're dangerously close to that figure, we will take it as God saying, yes, time for you to, yeah. to move. Otherwise, we've got 56 years of stuff stuffed into every nook and cranny 
of this, we, you know, we raised four kids and then... You'd have to have two vans, moving vans, just for the stuff. Just for the stuff in boxes. And that's what Shirley says, I could never, I could never manage a move to it. And I said, honey, there are companies yeah. that will manage it for us. Oh, yes. Yeah. And they would inventory everything. They just tell you to go to Hawaii and then meet us. But then bring us boxes when we in crates. Uh, they call them, uh, what do they call them? Not po boxes. I po pods. Pods. Yeah. Pod. pods. Bring us a pod yeah. at a time and we'll yeah. go through the pod and see what we had forgotten all about and hadn't seen for 30 years and we think we still need. Wow. <laughs> now, you, you know that's amazing. I know they talk about role models, but you truly are a role model for the Hollywood set. I mean, it's amazing. They don't know it. <laughs> but but do, I mean, does, does that really bother them? I mean, when, I mean, you, you are... In a way. It does. Yes, yes, in a way, without my intending it at all. Oh, sure. Um, some have indicated to me that they feel a certain intimidation. Sure. Certain, they said, oh, there's this goody two-shoes up here. You know, he doesn't drink, doesn't cuss. He's married to the same woman all these years. Didn't you do a movie and you said... I'll do it if I don't have to kiss. Oh well, that not exactly. Okay. It was there was no kiss in the script. My first movie. Yeah. Was was Bernadine no kiss in it, no love interest really. The next was April Love, right in the same year, 1957, with Shirley Jones, yeah. and there was no kiss in the script. So I hadn't even discussed that eventuality yeah. with my wife Shirley, <laughs> and, and 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 when the director at the end of this music scene said, now lean in and kiss Shirley Jones. I said, on the mouth? <laughs> he said, yes, where else? <laughs> yeah, where else? <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, and, um, and, and I said, Henry, that wasn't in the script. He said, no, but if people want to see you. This is a perfect place for you to kiss your leading lady. I said, you know, can we put it off till a little later? I haven't talked to my own wife, Shirley. Wow about kissing other women in the movies. So you're a major star at this time. Well, I was headlining. Yeah, the, yeah headlining. The two movies yeah. and uh, in top 10 box yeah. office, and I wasn't, and, and he, he, he thought it was kind of funny. He said, well, this would be a perfect place, but we'll save it till later in the film. I come home, I talk to Shirley, and I said, honey, uh, they want me to kiss Shirley Jones, and I, I, need, I don't need to know, is this gonna be a problem? She said, look, I, I'm ahead of you. If you're going to do movies, there's going to be kissing scenes. I want you to promise me one thing. I said, what? You won't enjoy it. <laughs> I said, I promise I won't enjoy it. So I came back to the studio telling the director, OK, I would kiss Shirley Jones. But this crazy thing had hit the trade papers. Overnight, Pat Boone refuses to kiss leading lady supposedly for religious reasons, and it was going worldwide on the wire services. Oh, I remember. The world remember. was learning. I wouldn't kiss the leading lady, and it wasn't for, quote, religious reasons. I just wanted to stay married. <laughs> and, uh, and so the head of the studio brought me in. He was very upset. He said, what is this about you not kissing your lead? I said, I explained it. Good. He said, I've already told the press after discussing with the director, you are going to kiss Shirley Jones. I said, Mr. Adler, that makes it, the way the story went out, it's gonna sound like, it does sound like I had a religious principle yesterday and I've yeah. surrendered it overnight through the persuasion of the uh, director. Can we do it later in the film at least? Well, you're gonna do it. Now telegrams, letters, big flooding 20th Century Fox, stick to your guns, boy. This, at last is somebody in the movies with morals and other letters, hey, you don't want to kiss her? I'll come out, let me kiss her. <laughs> I'll do the scene. And I'll do the scene. Yeah, that's right. And so in that movie, I, because of the, the way the story went out and because of all the approving letters that came pouring in uh, about a stand I really hadn't taken, I didn't kiss Shirley Jones in the movie. Wow. I did kiss later Debbie Reynolds, Anne Margaret, Diane Baker, I forget some of the others. I forget. That tells you I did not enjoy them. I promise Shirley I wouldn't enjoy it. So Shirley Jones missed that. And Margaret, I had saran wrap over our lips. Yeah, before. yeah, and Margaret. Oh yeah. 
she and Elvis did a pretty good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I left that to them. Yeah, that's right. But, but yeah, it, that, that story went out, and people, there are a lot of folks who still think that I refused to kiss the leading lady. Yeah, you, you had a variety show on ABC, film career, and, and now a new film, God's Not ah, Dead. Ah, yes. Okay, yes. tell us about that. I love just to say the title, God's Not Dead. God's not dead. God's yes. not dead. Tell them right there. There's your God's camera. God's not dead. <laughs> yeah. uh, and of course, the first film with Kevin Sorbo was a huge moneymaker. I I'm told it did over a hundred million at the box office. Really? Now God's not dead too. See, I had just done a film. Imagine at this stage of my life, I thought I was through making movies years ago. Yeah. But a couple of parts for 80-year-old guys came up. One is in Boonville Redemption, a film yet to be released, uh, a feature film about a town in, in the Northern California, Boonville, it exists, it's really a town, a rural small town where a faith-based drama takes place, including the minister of the little church being shot dead in his church in the Boonville. opening Boonville. And I play a part there, I played the town doctor, a very important role in that film. And because Pure Flix that did God's Not Dead saw a, a cut of that film, they asked me to play another 80-year-old in this uh, God's Not Dead 2. And it's, it comes out April 1st. Wow. And it's a, we saw a screening last night for several thousand people here. <laughs> Fabulous film. And it's about a hot button issue. A school teacher, and this can happen and is happening right now across America. We're letting it happen which is why this movie is important. Uh, a school teacher answers an innocent question from a student. They're studying Martin Luther King. Didn't Martin Luther King quote Jesus? Weren't some of the things that he said, things Jesus said, yes, he was Reverend Martin Luther King, the teacher says. And she quoted another couple of phrases, answering the kid's question. One of the kids is taping it on his iPhone, takes it home to his militant atheistic parents who were incensed that she was talking about Jesus in a classroom. And they come to the school and insist she be fired. The school tries to defend her and, 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 and they hire a, a really high level, high pressure atheistic lawyer. They want her fired, they want her punished, they want to make a, a statement. They get the ACLU involved, it becomes a national a story. Now everybody's watching, is this teacher going to apologize for saying the name Jesus in the classroom? Or is she going to say, I, I will always answer a question. I wasn't preaching, but there's demonstrations. It's, I mean, it gets to be a huge thing. And I'm her grandfather, and I am encouraging her to not to stick to her guns as much as listen to what God wants you to do. And, uh, and, and it's a beautiful, I you can't like tell the you script? How, oh yeah. Can't tell you how it is, except at the end, I'm on wa a walker. I mean, I'm not. I'm an infirm grandfather <laughs> and a walker. And the director asked me to do a ce celebratory dance. I said, I'm on a walker. How can I, how can I dance on a walker? He said, Well, do something when you get the news. And and so I, you know, I'm I'm gyrating, and then in a burst of inspiration, I just said, God, you're good. And they took a picture, and they're using the picture of me with my hand up like this, promoting the film, God's Not Dead. Wonderful. So it comes out April 1st. It's not April Fool. April 1st. April 1st, God's Not Dead. Yeah, yeah. That's a little over a month away. Yes, wow. And it's a good film, and I think it, it has the, because it is a hot button issue, and. You know, Billy, uh, Franklin Graham is touring the country right now, yeah. really covering the nation. He's got his big nation. bus in here. Do you see it? I know. Yeah. And, and he is calling on Christians to be knowledgeable and to vote. Because if Christians... Yeah. 25 would million simply, stayed out the last time. Yes. We could win every election on every level. Yes. We could elect nothing but as John Jay, our first Supreme Court Justice, yes. advised that God and through his providence has yeah. made us a Christian nation and it is our duty and our privilege to elect Christians to represent it. This was the first judge of the first Supreme Court 
forget about this separation yes, of church yes, and state. Yes. Oh, he was yeah. saying we are to elect Christians to represent, if we want yeah. America to be what they intended it to be. But now Just think, Christians are derelict. was written with men that were on their knees with an open Bible. Yes. Can you believe this? A Christian coalition yes. is what I told them on yeah. the Bill Maher's show when they were putting down the Christian coalition. I said, does it occur to you people the Constitution was written by a Christian coalition. Well, not the, I didn't say the, I said a yeah. coalition of yeah. Christians. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you want to keep people who think like that, who created a republic in which we can all speak our mind however we choose. Yeah. You want to keep people who think like that yes, out of government? Yes, yeah. they do. Yeah. The answer is yes. They do. Yeah. They yeah. do. Yeah. You're right. Could you share Christ with that camera right there, somebody watching across the country? Wow. Well. That's a tall order. But on the other hand, it can be very, very simple. I wrote a song once, and nobody knows it yet, because it doesn't sound like it would become a popular hit. Everybody dies. I wanted a universal theme. The universal theme is everybody dies. Now, some people, because of this life, which we know about, we buy insurance because we want to leave something behind. We want to maybe take care of people we love, though we ourselves will be gone. But we are going to die, and there is such a thing as eternal life insurance. And you only get it one place. Only per one person can, can secure your eternal life and future. And it is the creator of all things, God himself and the person of Jesus, who became a human being to let us know what God is like and offer us eternal salvation. It's yours if you'll receive it. What an honor. Okay. And just remember what Pat was saying, but as many as receive him, yeah. to them he gives the authority to be called his children. Yes, yes. And that but as many, put your name in there. Yes. Jesus yes. Christ, yeah. right now, yes. is waiting. You know, sometimes we get the idea, I don't know if I'll ever choose Christ. Well, he's going to choose you. Already has. Yes. He that's chose exactly. Yeah. That's right. He chose you. Do you hear that? Yeah. Already has. Yeah. That's why you happen to be watching you today. You have to seal the deal. Yeah. You probably thought, you probably <laughs> yeah. thought this was a coincidence. No. God's plan for you to hear yeah. how to be saved. Right. Yeah. Trust him today. Don't let the day go by without trusting him. God bless you. Bye-bye. Have you reached a decision? I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. God's not dead. He's surely alive. He's... God bless you. Careful, or you might end up on trial. He